सुमन अग्रवाल मैम वेलकम टू द रनवीर शो वंस अगेन टुडे इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्वर्जेशन स्पेशली फॉर ऑल आवर फीमेल लिसनर्स इट्स मोर अबाउट हाउ द न्यूट्रिशन चेंजेस इन द लाइफ कॉर्स ऑफ अ वुमेन एट वॉट एज डज जेंडर स्टार्ट मैटरिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ डायट यास द गर्ल्स What happens to all these people who follow a vegan diet for a very long time in their life? They will have deficiencies. There'll be a lot of vegans who'll get upset listening to this. I think the way our forefathers have designed our diet is actually fantastic. This PCOS PCOD problem was very common when we were making fitness content nine years ago, and it's still very common. It's a huge rise in PCOS in India. Why? So again. What's it like for women who are going through menopause? How does it feel? So depression, sleep disturbance. They feel weight gain is okay because I've menopaused. What do you tell them? Sleep is a major issues in the teenagers I'm seeing nowadays. They think if they sleep at eleven, they are doing a crime, which is actually causing all that hormone related issues. Should girls be having protein powders? during the teenage as a rule we don't give protein powders to kids who are growing during the height growth time because um, what's a mistake that all of them are doing that they don't even know is a mistake all of them are doing intermittent fasting what are the most common mistakes that pregnant women do from a diet perspective so they all think that they are eating for two and they all indulge another mistake i've seen mothers doing is eating that is actually very very dangerous This particular episode is especially for the ladies. Personally, I've come to realize through the journey of this show that the male biology and the female biology are fundamentally different and therefore have different dietary requirements. This episode is centered in biology and science. Suman Agarwal has created a blockbuster episode with us on our Hindi channel where we discussed the basics of weight loss. That episode has its own cult following. we decided to do this particular episode in english so that it reaches even the southern parts of our country where hindi is not commonly spoken this episode is very very important it should reach the northeast it should reach every single part of our country where the english language is spoken it's for the ladies but if you are a man consuming this podcast you will gain scientific knowledge about diets and nutrition from one of the country's top and most experienced nutritionist suman agarwal her clientele includes bollywood superstars cricketers politicians and some of the stalwarts in the city called mumbai in this episode we expanded a woman's life from the time of her birth right until her extreme old age and chalked out her dietary requirements so this is a very detailed free of cost diet plan for different phases of a woman's life and you're getting it courtesy of one of the country's top nutritionists suman agarwal a diet special trs here we go suman agarwal ma'am Welcome to the Ranveer show once again. Thank you so much Ranveer. Very glad to be here again. Uh we did a very epic Hindi episode uh which was like a general health 101. Um uh, for people who don't know Suman ma'am, you're one of our country's all time leading dietitians. Fair to say? Yes. How how long have you been a professional dietitian for? I've been in this field since 24 years. Okay. Plus, yeah. And How are you feeling? Oh, just on top of the world. Yeah, I, I, today is a very important conversation, especially for all our female listeners. Uh, I thought that there's a lot of health podcasts on uh, the Indian internet, but we should also definitely do one which is just oriented towards women, because I genuinely believe that as a guy, I feel women's bodies and the nature of their life is a lot more complicated than a guy because you guys are capable of producing life yeah. and i'm learning this from all my female friends who are my age yeah. so if you're a guy who's born in 1993 and a girl who's born in 1993 even now at age 31 i feel your experiences of life are very different 
So it makes me question that what is life like in your 40s, in your 50s, in your 60s as a woman. But fair to say it's like a little different than being a guy. It is more challenging than a guy. uh but you know like women go through menopause even guys go through something like that but because they produce kids it's a whole different world and different steps they have to take care they have to take during that time they are more prone to many health diseases because you know because of hormonal changes which men don't have yeah yeah i think that hormonal angle is a very big part of a girl's life throughout her life yes. in fact throughout the month uh, <laughs> so maybe my first context setting for the audience is that we're going to do a timeline based podcast okay. where we're going to take a woman's life right from a uh, pre puberty up till old age and talk about it from a diet perspective so it's not a totally gynecology oriented podcast but it's more about the food lifestyle and exercise factors how the nutrition changes in the life course of a woman okay uh should we start the women's timeline now yes okay at what age does gender start mattering in terms of diet because i'm assuming that when you're a kid a boy's body and a girl's body are pretty much the same but i'm assuming that when a girl starts getting a periods things change yes So does the diet also change at that phase? Yes, yeah, so the girls need to have little more rich in iron. You know, the iron is what they require, and uh, so that is what we increase in a girl's diet and make sure that it's enough fat, because it's a hormone, right? Certain hormones are made from fat, so the fat has to be enough, and uh, their iron levels have to be washed out, and uh, of course, uh, so these are the two main things, and. rest of the things all the same and for uh boys we it's different we concentrate more on zinc on zinc yeah i really want to ask you a boy question <laughs> <laughs> because they build muscle right okay so for that muscle recovery and everything so okay. zinc is more okay so the girls need to have enough iron in their blood and of course the calcium levels that is goes for both of them actually when they are Gr- because the girls going. grow up till the age of 16 17 and boys grow up till the age of 22 23 24 in fact we had a uh, boy coming who was growing even at the age of 22 taller god yeah. what foods give you iron so the time of puberty is not only iron but also because they are still growing taller so we have to make sure that we are giving calcium rich food as i told you i am not one of those nutritionists who does not believe in milk protein i totally believe in it because i suffered myself when i gave up milk for 3 years so i believe that milk should be a milk or dahi or paneer uh, or cheese should be a good part of a growing child till the time they are going to grow taller to maximize or to optimize their height growth as per their genes so what are the foods that increase the iron intake so uh, certain fruits like pomegranate and watermelon nuts like pistachios and pulses like black eyed pea and uh, uh black eyed pea chole all these are having enough iron then certain grains like um ragi and bajra they have high iron and then there are certain seeds which are like halim seeds so you can soak them in the night and uh, or crushed or whole and then have in the morning one teaspoon two teaspoon so that can help to raise the iron then if you are uh, highly iron deficient then even taking you know in the uh, east india it is indian uh, like bengal side you get this kule khara there are leaves which you can soak in the night and have it in the morning that also helps so there are many things you can do to raise your iron but keeping a balanced diet having enough protein helps okay what's the most common one that you know what what will you give uh, a parent who's a working professional who wants to take care of the daughter's uh, iron requirements what's the quickest and easiest one have uh, nachni rotis ragi rotis <laughs> once yeah, twice a week yeah yeah nachni roti uh, every day and you know something they can also give their child something called what we devised a recipe called miracle juice which is made from tomatoes pomegranate amla which is vitamin c so for iron to get absorbed you need vitamin c so amla then carrots and uh, carrots and little bit beetroot so boiled beetroot one fourth you can juice it and give to your child with your breakfast in the morning but freshly squeezed juice or you can give a soup made with 
uh, carrot and tomato and uh, beetroot and onions. So that will also help. That raises the iron level. Okay. Mm. And a multivitamin and making sure B12 is correct. You recommend multivitamins to all your clients? Yeah. Irrespective of what they want. So whether someone's coming for muscle building or weight Everyone loss. Everyone has to take one multivitamin because we don't know. We all live in cities. We don't know what is uh, what B complexes are being retained and what is uh, from the food which we eat and what is getting washed out or while cooking is getting uh, like you know burn whatever you know not being available. So one multivitamin we give to everyone. Okay, one uh, one tablet once a day. Yeah, that's it. Any other supplements that everyone should be having? Omega three everyone has to have. From what age? I think from a very young age. Even the pregnant women are given omega. Okay. Wow. That is proven to be really helping because of the presence of UP and DHA for the brain cells too. So it's also an anti-aging. So uh, Ranveer, we do a lot of anti-aging treatment for our clients. So we don't say that anti-aging is only meaning like your face has to be beautiful. Actually, anti-aging is from inside. Cellular level. Yeah, cellular level. So yeah. <laughs> so how do you maintain a good a good body internally digestion your back your as young as your back right how good is your backbone so how you can maintain that and how you can maintain enough muscle mass and how you can maintain good brain cells and how you can avoid getting dementia alzheimer which is in such a big rise in india because of the in the older population right we'll we'll get there in the timeline yeah so these are those omega multivitamin and making sure ions are proper if iron is low you can of course take a supplement which is fine and uh, another vitamin we don't give it to kids but elder people but yeah kids are this is what we would like to give okay uh, i think the again the angle with omega is that it's derived from a fish's body not necessary you got vegetarian omega also from flaxseed okay for the sake of asking you asking this why can't you just eat the flaxseed Hmm. So to have the same amount of EPA, DHA, what you can get out of a capsule, maybe you have to have a lot of flax. A big bag of flax. <laughs> no, no, not that much. Yeah, but a lot, <laughs> which can also cause toxicity in certain levels. So you can't have these things. Got. Yeah. Okay. And not tasty. Hmm. Why can you just pop a pill? Hmm. Okay. Are there parents who are not open to supplementation? Very. I haven't heard any. Everyone, all the kids take gummies and they take. omega is this thing and calcium as gummies which is fine okay what else happens in a teenage girl's life that changes her dietary requirements so enough protein and enough calcium till they're growing up then we have to manage uh it's just the iron which is important iron some and zinc also to a certain level because iron and zinc go hand in hand for each other's absorption so then they have a requirement when they are preparing to when they get married and they want to get pregnant so pre pregnancy they need to change their diet okay i have a question between the teenage and the pre pregnancy which is uh, pcos and pcod yeah which is like a very common problem nowadays yeah it's like uh, I I'm when we won't get too much into the gynecology aspect this is just the diet aspect because any gynecologist that you speak to about PCOS or PCOD will usually say first let's approach it from a dietary perspective i'm assuming that gynecologists send you a lot of patients for yes. the sake of a diet so this PCOS PCOD problem was very common when we were making fitness content 9 years ago and it's still very common no it's more common it's becoming it's more become, with time yeah it's a it's a it's a huge rise in pcos in india why so again lifestyle sedentary there's too much pressure on studies especially from the age of 15 16 they uh, and uh, no proper guidance towards the physical health and uh, of course uh, hormones goes off which is so pcos is not one hormone it's a collection of many hormones or could be one or two out of the collection of many which goes off so starting from uh thyroid to prolactin levels to insulin levels to um to uh, fsh lh and dhes many hormones goes off and then we have to work in hand in hand with the doctors ki what medications are required and uh, uh, to get the periods regularized etc so it's a collection of all the symptoms and in the diet part what they require is of course um if they have 
thyroid is off so they need to take medication along with that we have to make a thyroid friendly diet which is um making sure that we give them enough selenium in their diets which can come from like macadamia or some nuts and uh, making sure we avoid certain uh, grains like bajra and avoiding uh, soya bean can help them to not and any soya product for that matter but Wh- if they take taking- why avoiding bajra because it raises your thyroid levels okay so certain changes in the diet help them and of course certain exercises for thyroid patient and making sure their b12 is on the right track because b12 deficiency and iron deficiency can spike your tsh also d3 deficiency making all the three levels proper so thyroid can be handled next is and certain asana especially like sarvanga asan which can you know Uh, massages it, your yeah. gland that's what people don't understand about yoga until they start doing it yeah that you're, mo- you're moving your body in so many weird ways yeah, yeah, yeah. that definitely those organs are getting yeah, massaged yeah, yeah. 100% there's just you know the scientific research on these subjects related to specific asanas needs to be done yeah i always believe in this and we yeah. we have uh, Uh, we send them to even uh, yoga for yoga classes so that's about the and also you know any hormone issues happen because of they are not consuming enough good quality fat so there is something called essential fatty acids which is important for making balancing these hormones okay which is thyroid and pancreatic everything so deficiency of uh, and where does the essential fatty acids come from it comes from fish but if you are vegetarian then you have to use oil now you know there is another leher in india about ghee everyone is cooking food in ghee i don't understand why what will you get out of ghee of course cholesterol but how much cholesterol what about essential fatty acid which you only get from an oil any so, oil like the, the rule with uh, fat consumption is change it up right no so ghee is to be how our forefathers have told that ghee make it make a dal in ghee put ghee in on your chapati and maybe add it little bit to your rice but the vegetables should be cooked in oil okay why are you not cooking your vegetables in oil so deficiency of oil can also cause your hormones to go off so that also we check for them so w- that's about what th- what oil do you recommend to your clients so i tell them i'm i'm fine with peanut i'm fine with sunflower i'm fine with rice bran i'm fine with any oil which is in indian cooking because we do cooking at a high temperature so any of these oils are fine okay and how much do you need to cook like one sabji for four people <laughs> <laughs> no, depending what else you are eating with that 3 to 4 teaspoons in a day is okay. enough so with every meal one teaspoon of fat is more than enough more than enough is it okay to do like uh in the morning maybe i have one teaspoon of ghee to cook my eggs or whatever then the afternoon One teaspoon of another oil, then uh, my my fo- my third meal will be just little nuts, which I also count in this fat category, and the fourth meal will be another oil. That's so. That's uh, in- instead of doing so much of complication, we tell everyone to cook their eggs in olive oil because eggs don't require high temperature cooking. So you get your mufa. Mufa is also important for you because it raises your good cholesterol. Then I tell them to use if they want to like. put little butter on their toast or little ghee on their chapatis is perfectly all right this is how we are grown so but i tell them because if you are having milk protein in dahi and paneer from you are getting enough hidden fat which is again ghee fat so don't use ghee on making dal so use oil for making vegetables and dal like just use oil for that and then but you can use oil uh, and dinner the same way so you can use your uh, uh, peanut oil for 2 3 months then sunflower oil for 2 3 months then Rice bran oil for two three months. I'm fine with that. Got it. So over but the use, year, yeah. But mm. use uh, olive oil for eggs. But keep rotating. So if your bottle gets over, then you buy a bottle of another oil. Yeah. Got it. Would be a good good choice to do. Okay. I want to expand this conversation on PCOS again. Um, if someone comes up to you with PCOS and they send to you by a gynecologist saying that you have to actually correct your diet. what are common mistakes you see in their diet before they come to you uh, and is the treatment the same in most cases or is it different so what mistakes i see that uh, like back in the day say 2005 6 
those days the girls were extremely sedentary they would not exercise and that's why they were putting on weight and they were taking junk food so no balance of fat and too much of carbs and excess bad quality fat and sugars but nowadays it's not that the girls are going towards that kind of food and they're not active they're actually really doing a lot of exercise also at the same time even teenagers yeah yeah everyone is quite pumped about exercise they have a wow yeah i would say a good 50 to 60% are quite aware and they are managing the exercise but the problem is that they don't have the balance of exercise also so what we do for pcos the first and foremost most important thing is weight loss okay so 80 to 90 today only we had a, a girl coming in who had pcos and she knows that when she is her ideal body weight which is around 50 to 53 all her pcos symptoms goes away which is uh, hirsutism which is hair and the pigmentation and um uh, pe- irregular periods and blah blah so all that corrects as soon as you reach your ideal body weight so my job is to make sure we bring them to their good weight and at the same time give us give a sound diet and at the same time give them a good exercise pattern so because they are so pumped and they know about weight training and pilates and yoga and kickboxing so they are only doing muscle building and stretching kind of exercise they are not concentrating on uh, low impact cardio so we have to balance that that's the common mistake they are making and um of course many of them turn vegans so we tell them no we need good quality fat also at the same time which comes from oil and nuts but at the same time some amount very little amount of cholesterol so we balance their diet so the common mistake they would be making is that they are still very very fond of chocolates so bringing their desserts and and you know after swiggy and zomato like okay i want to have this ice cream immediately order mm. it can come at 1 o'clock any time right so that is a challenge they and all sleep late sleep is a major issues in the teenagers i am seeing nowadays which is actually causing all that hormone related issues because i don't understand that they think if they sleep at 11 they are doing a crime haven't you heard this <laughs> i don't want to say anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah so kids their development is happening they need they are em sleep they need their deep sleep how will the deep sleep happen if they're going to sleep only at 2 3 oh. so if the deep sleep is not happened that means their body is not rested how if the body is not rested how the good hormones are going to be produced how will the body repair itself you tell me so that is one another common mistake i'm finding the sleep deprivation because they are awake till so late they also munch rubbish at night so these are the common problems i'm seeing so but we have to really tell them that uh, you need to get more responsible towards your life you like you know you're no more like uh, you need to be sleeping because you are a student you need to study you need to grow you need to have a stronger body it's not always all about academics so all these are also you're responsible for your own body also yeah then they it's a whole 360 degree approach towards one's health so someone comes up to you with pcos in most cases it's a weight loss related issue yeah so if they lose weight the pcos tends to correct itself usually yeah usually okay this is what i've heard a lot of gynecologists say also uh but say if there is a case where the pcos doesn't correct itself after weight loss then they have to continue the medication which is could be a uh, hormone related medication do you have to add anything to your diet or it's more about removing things and just so, cleaning it up no so we do give vitamins which is uh myoinositol and dkyroinositol and uh, for prolactin we also give l carnitine and we give b long it's another vitamin so b deficiency so we uh, add certain vitamins and suppose they are not sleeping on time and uh, anxiety is another issue which i find among the teenagers now because of the studies and the peer pressure and the body image so uh, so 
we also tell them that take counseling if you want to and we add magnesium so that they fall off to sleep they have a good long deep sleep all and the, all these are supplements the supplements okay. we can't prescribe medication so yeah we handle with certain vitamins and of course i told you b12 d3 iron has to be in the good range okay um basically try not eating dessert also that's a key part of all this everything we spoke about weight loss yeah so dessert is something which you can't tell them listen don't have dessert they're not going to listen to me or you or their parents so we tell them how to have desserts like today only two girls they said they have to have something cold at night otherwise they can't sleep cold something cold like an ice cream okay like a cold dessert cold yeah, and sweet yeah, cold and sweet so i gave them a very good hack huh. 100 ml of almond milk one like one fourth cup of frozen blueberries and maybe half a banana and maybe one to two dates depending on your sweetness and around six to eight pistachios which okay. is unsalted okay. and i i because i work out so i add little bit of a protein powder in it okay. so there is natural sugar and good quality fat and good quality proteins and some berries so that you sleep well and you put an ice and then you churn it and becomes like a nice smoothie <laughs> which is my half the time i have that at night should girls be having protein powders during their teenage lots of girls take up weight training in their 20s and we'll talk about why later but teenage girls who are active or going for dance classes or are playing sports um or doing cardio they started running and all that should they be taking protein shakes as a rule we don't give protein powders to kids who are growing height uh, in during the height growth time why because um, there i met uh, uh, two three orthopedic doctors and they said that if if they are not taking protein like milk protein natural form but depending totally on whey protein then there is some problem which happens in their bone mineralization which wow. can trouble them in future so we don't give we give natural foods to children so you're saying the right age to start your protein shakes ideally should be after your growth is done which is 22 23 for guys for guys yeah and for girls 16 17 okay that's the right age wow this is But what collagen is something which can be taken by younger girls supplement yeah it's a collagen is a powder which is very good for skin so around 18 years they can start taking collagen what does it do So collagen is a form of a protein supplement which is it's a naturally occurring below our skin but as we age it depletes so so japanese people women have been taking it since um 80% of japanese women actually take this so i have been taking collagen from say almost like 12 13 years and i believe in this uh, product it's sort of a protein but it doesn't have all the amino acids it does lack on one or two so they cannot depend as their first class protein on collagen it helps them with the high hair growth so that uh, uh, that is one thing and also maintaining the collagen below the skin and also uh, if people some people also have like old elderly uh, generation if they have knee pain etc we give them for cartilage building so that is also and in fact in fact it is also good for your nails so it has it's a very good supplement but taken in a limited quantity they cannot take like how 130 grams of whey protein they take or the vegan protein or pea protein they can't take uh, collagen that much the maximum they should take after checking with their doctor or nutritionist around 7 to 8 grams cool okay um with girls in this age range uh this is what i've noticed a lot of people wake up to weight loss and fat loss in this age bracket this is late teens mm -hmm. when your uh, 12th standard is done mm -hmm. like when senior college is starting uh it's probably like a it's an attraction based thing for guys at least i don't know what girls i think girls just do it for themselves guys only <laughs> do it for the girls <laughs> guys also do it for themselves i've seen guys always idolizing themselves in front of the mirror but it's from a perspective of impressing girls yeah <laughs> okay somewhere yeah, on yeah. some level yeah. for girls i don't think that that's a motivation i think it's much more about i think girls dress up and look good also for other girls first and then they don't care about the guys anyway uh my point is people wake up to weight loss fat loss in this phase 
what's the most common mistake you see with people are coming up to you for weight loss what's a mistake that all of them are doing that they don't even know is a mistake yeah all of them are doing intermittent fasting <laughs> or giving becoming vegan so many girls today only one girl yeah i did intermittent i lost this much weight but now it's not going and i'm having headaches and i'm having and also their metabolism goes down because of intermittent fasting because you're not eating for 16 hours so you are sleeping not for 6 8 hours you're sleeping for 8 hours what about the other you know 4 and 4 hours yeah when you're awake and exercising without eating anything what do you think your energy is coming from it is from the muscles how much of glycogen store you will have whatever you have you'll deplete that and then you'll start hitting your muscle sores that which is bringing your metabolism down they do this as a hack to lose weight yeah okay because it seems like a simple hack simple thing just eat from this man and they don't even balance the nutrition if they want to do intermittent come to a nutritionist we'll balance it for you at least do you ever give anyone an intermittent fasting style diet when they want a 16 and 8 split yeah we give them and but we tell them these are the things we don't like but i'm of course giving it to you and we try to make sure that all the nutrition what we are supposed to give in four meals we pack it in three meals got it and you, we do it it's not that we don't do it but we tell them that this is what is going to happen so your focus again is the macros as well as the micronutrients in in those three nutraceuticals and everything yeah and then you'll give it a going to time that 2 pm do this 4 pm yeah 2 and 6 and 8 for them it's 2 6 8 mm okay so when people are coming up to you for weight loss and they have a habit of eating so much dessert and so much packaged food cold drinks etc how do you retrain them so we of course um, so yeah many young girls come having diet coke all the time first of all if you are in growth period boy or girl they cannot have diet coke because it has caffeine in it hampers the calcium absorption and of course your growth is not going to be proper and it causes stomach distress okay so we tell them so we tell them replace it with at least our age old shikanji nimbu pani with if you want to have that sugary taste have sugar and salt na no problem it's the best drink to have and hydrates and got vitamin c and gives you energy and refreshing and no problem to your gut there is a hack to the nimbu pani also because you like the fizz you make your nimbu pani and have 100 ml of nimbu pani and 100 ml of soda or like sparkling water so it become little how how much sugar in that so 100 ml will have 1 to 2 tea, one and a half teaspoon is enough and put little lime and salt and top it up with a sparkling water and then it's your drink is ready some put some ice put some mint leaves amazing refreshing drink and when can you have it you can have with your meal or before like in between your meal when you are feeling thirsty especially imagine about the heat wave which is going on all over the world so that is one thing now dessert is something which is very tricky because uh, desserts they are all addicted to chocolates and chocolates is an addiction because it is cocoa it is a form of caffeine so that is a very hard addiction to go uh, get rid of we tell them if you want to have a dessert so go for uh, your snack time is you what you can eat because you know around 4 or 5 o'clock you're still active till the night so you burn it off so instead of having your carb or whatever you're having at that time if your evening snacks is protein based so have some protein based dessert and if your evening snacks is carb based have some carb based chocolates or anything like i had this woman coming she said suman i can't do without chocolate so you make my diet and i have to have chocolate a day every day so i do packaged foods are really bad and i am not very proud of saying but i told her okay have two bourbon two bourbons every day with her tea in the evening and she's not touched desserts or anything she said that's my dessert of the day and i'm she's following the diet to the t and doing very well yeah. so we what they like is but a lot of people don't like biscuits so instead of that i would give them some chocolate oats or some dark chocolates at that time or you know i make mishta <laughs> so i would give my mishta promote my mishta at the same time so for the snack time is dark chocolate significantly better than having milk chocolate yeah because chocolate are having antioxidants and and the concentration of fat and sugar and uh, yeah is much lower than milk chocolate yeah so if you have to have chocolate is it a better choice to switch to dark chocolate or they can have it with their uh, just immediately after their uh, meal 
because the, then the sugar spikes won't be there because you have had a heavy meal it's going to take 3 hours it has protein so sugar spikes will be lesser so and also tell them that at least choose healthier desserts like dates dates are good rich in iron good for the young girls it will help them to yeah forgot about the dates in the list of uh, iron rich food so date is good so also having gooseberry candies which we uh, it's available everywhere in india which is amle ke wo candies jo hote hain so those so those are also very good rich in vitamin c and satisfy your taste bud and it has fiber so these are the things they can have okay there's a very key question that sent in by a lot of girls in our office but i've also heard so many of my female relatives say this so let's address it right after the pcos which is soya everyone is confused about soya because you'll hear a lot of uh, vegetarians turning to soya chunks as a form of getting the protein in it has a very high protein content but at the same time it can affect your hormonal system what is the truth about it does it affect different people differently yeah you know uh, soya is actually having lot of good qualities because it's had good quality fat and it has fiber and it rich in iron and uh, so it can be easily consumed by girls or elderly people or anyone who can digest soya very well so the two to three servings in a day is maximum they should take um, as per uh, like around one serving could be 50 to 75 grams of tofu so that's that's easy there's no problem of toxicity or any problem unless you have thyroid and then you have to control your so intake okay basically a bowl of tofu in every meal is also okay three meals yeah to i mean never do a lot like i would not give pulses in three meal to any of my clients i will not go give paneer in every, every meal so you need to have a balance of proteins in your diet i'll tell you what i do um so i count six clean eating days uh i do two days paneer third day tofu then two days paneer third day tofu and this is just once a day like one good serving of it like a nice big serving It's of very it very good balance so you go to the store and you buy those packets of uh, tofu you try consuming them on the same day because if you leave it in the fridge or the freezer yeah. the taste changes, changes and everything of course. so so try buying both paneer and tofu really fresh mm -hmm. and this is what works for me as a vegetarian I think it's a very good one but I'm a guy <laughs> uh, is it the same for girls yes there's no problem related to hormones going up and down or anything like it is uh, it has estrogen right so in fact women above uh, above the age of 45 50 should have soy in their diet okay mm -hmm. uh so you would recommend it to at least vegetarian women yes yes do you recommend it to non vegetarian women also if they have high cholesterol then i tell them have soya instead of having chicken or fish uh, chicken for that meal so at least your cholesterol will become better okay got it so you're for it all in all what about soya chunks soya chunks are defatted okay they're also healthy it just doesn't have the fat at all has the fiber has the iron has the protein so it they are good to go at least two to three meals like how you're doing with the tofu you can have instead of tofu you can have soy chunks and very nice vegetable can be made with the greens and with indian masalas lovely very tasty ones are made i think nowadays there's also this thing called tempeh yeah do you recommend tempeh yeah that's also fine what is it made of uh, soy only okay okay there's different way of making it it tastes better for me then like tofu tofu gets boring like if you have it all so we time. have clients from china who are chinese and we have thai clients from thailand so of course their diets are made as per because that's what they usually have so it's a it, soya is not a bad product it's just that indians have not grown up eating soy so sometimes we are not able to digest that particular uh, uh, grain as much as we are digesting others but in, since last 20 30 40 years there's a huge uprise in consumption of soy chunks because uh, because of the protein and so people are having it and also indians are very fond of trying different cuisines like you will never find a thai person trying 10000 cuisines or having absorbing them into their daily life and you will not find a japanese like that in fact i once way to uh, was going to leh ladakh and i saw one whole japanese people struck coming uh, uh, the bus coming in and they were only eating the japanese food in leh ladakh because oh. they had gotten the um what you call 
dehydrated food and they used wow. to add water and have like it. how we take thepla and go away. yeah okay. and mm. they were very particular they knew that they can't eat only indian food their stomachs are not made for yes. so but indians love to have try they could like thai cuisine chinese cuisine japanese their favorite and italian of course is a long a long back so that's why the tofu is very good for them at least it, if they are vegetarian the tofu balances their meals otherwise they are only eating noodle and mm. then where is the protein noodle and vegetables and where is the protein coming in then sushi no protein we are breaking down a lot of nutrition based concepts but i feel there's three very key phases of women's life that we should speak about one is pre pregnancy which i would also say for many women is like late 20s early 30s in the modern day yeah late uh, 20s and early 30s and i know that scientifically speaking uh women's bodies especially the muscle weight and their bone density reduces in this same phase unless they're doing strength training during yeah like this is i remember this from all our fitness videos like this used to be a very important phase for training women during the pregnancy no no in the same age bracket so after the age of 25 girls bone densities start reducing naturally if they're not into strength training no so the bone uh, the calcium depletion or the bone depletion happens after the age of 35 not before not 25 no that's for the pregnancy before 35 is better because you are still like depositing calcium on your bone okay do you want to highlight the bone density part or the pre pregnancy part or the pregnancy part is very important in fact the women frame size changes if suppose uh, a woman when who came to me when they were 20 or 21 or 25 when they were not pregnant not married or married but not pregnant if their frame size is small medium like around small size okay any category of small we have three categories in small 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 medium small large but after they get pregnant because the diet becomes richer to support you know the body itself deposit more calcium on their bone to make sure that they are able to go through the labor wow. which is a very difficult part of the whole pregnancy the labor right the delivering a baby so in fact body prepares to deposit more calcium to the bone so their frame size actually after they deliver and after the lactation period changes sometimes to medium so if their ideal body weight because we calculate everyone's ideal body weight depending on their the 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 size you know skeletal skeletal size there is a particular formula we use to understand what is their frame size so that actually changes after they deliver so ideal body weight as per the frame size is say around 52 53 they can the ideal body weight can jump to 62 after they deliver because so much bone they have deposited and the frame size has become bigger so all these natural changes that are happening because of your body have to be assisted by your diet it, it during pregnancy it it is assisted okay can we break down pregnancy from actually even before conception is there any dietary changes that help you become more fertile so uh, there are certain uh, suppose if like today only we had one lady coming to us who wanted to start a diet plan because she uh, wanted to get pregnant so we introduce a vitamin called ubiquinol or coenzyme q10 in a higher dosage to increase the uh, fertility even wow. for men and women so that's what we do and they also have to take folic acid tablets if they are planning the pregnancy in the natural way and uh, they have to make sure that they are not taking any um any uh, vitamins which they are not supposed to take if they are planning a pregnancy just stick to basic omega and a multivitamin make sure their their uh, basic uh, vitamin vitamins i and b12 d3 are in good range and their diet is rich in protein and it's not devoid of calcium and basically the same thing and fertility is for fertility they need to make sure that their uh, hormones are in check and okay. their weights so some many time i find women not able to get pregnant because they are overweight so as soon as they lose 5 to 10 kilos they without any treatment they get pregnant so, so like, many cases we so the body's it. natural mechanism yeah, of yeah yeah that your body is not ready to create another so life. as soon as they lose weight they are able to get pregnant wow okay can we talk about the 9 month phase yes is there different dietary requirements in the different phases of those 9 months so, yeah so the all the three has little bit different but basic the macros are that their protein has to be 
वन थर्ड मोर सो अराउंड फिफ्टीन ग्राम्स एक्स्ट्रा प्रोटीन आई हैव टू गिव दैम ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी द होल प्रेगनेंसी एंड थ्री हंड्रेड एक्स्ट्रा कैलरीज देन वॉट देवर हैविंग अर्लियर इफ देर आइडल बॉडी वेट ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी अफकोर्स द फैट ऑल्सो रिक्वायरमेंट गोस आप एंड सर्टन वाइटमिन गोस आप सो इफ दे दे गायनेक्स गिव्स दैम बी कट एक्समीन और प्रेगना केयर एट्सेट्रा टू कम्प्लीट दोज माइक्रोज एंड वी टेक केयर ऑफ द माइक्रोज विच इज कैल्शियम विच गोज आप रियली हाई अराउंड ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड टू ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एम जी ड्यूरिंग इलेवन हंड्रेड टू ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एम जी ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी एंड रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ प्रोटीन एज आई मैंशन गोज आप एंड द कोलेस्ट्रॉल again coming back to cholesterol because fetus brain develops on cholesterol so eggs eggs and milk and dahi and paneer so oh. eggs are extremely healthy during this time so and uh, so the bone bone also need calcium the mineralization and iron deficiency is uh, largely seen in women so we make sure that uh, their uh, iron rich food is introduced in their diet and so yeah so the basics that we already spoke about earlier on the podcast just little more of it yeah. more calories but through organic fresh food so yes. you can't just have chocolate cake <laughs> for those 300 calories and what they are not supposed to have which is which is actually very important having green tea green tea has certain elements which decreases the absorption of folic acid so uh, that they should not have otherwise they think they're doing a healthier choice by turning from regular tea to uh, green tea then they should not have too much tea coffee again it hampers the absorption of calcium and iron so and both are extremely important during pregnancy so caffeine should be really really limited wow yeah uh, so goes for red bull or aerated drinks like so it's very harmful so any cheese which is made from unpasteurized milk they should not have like? so soft cheeses they should blue cheese etc they should only have hard processed cheese soft like cream cheese yeah so certain cheeses which are made from unpasteurized milk they should not have if you want i'll give you a list yeah okay yeah. M- uh, basically any any of the cheeses which are soft yeah soft okay. so unpasteurized milk so blue mm-hmm. cheese is one i know but i'll give you the list then certain fish which has high mercury content they cannot have so of course i will and uh, tea coffee i mentioned of course all alcohol and cigarette smoking to of course absolutely not to be touched i'm not trying to trouble you but what will vegan moms do like in this yeah, case yeah they should not be vegan at all during this phase yeah there's no way okay. you are you are really playing with your baby's health so also how will they get highly absorbable form of calcium during this time so become non vegan for the 9 months yes and introduce what in your diet paneer dahi okay got it very very important for them to know that the it it is it's not that it's not going to be done it's going to be done but then you are playing not only with your health but you also your baby's health because you are also at the risk of osteoporosis your bone mass will go low your there'll be bones may become osteoporotic at an older age and so whatever the baby does not get it is drawn from the mother's body mm. that is the problem <sighs> yeah this is why men have it much more simpler than women yeah. women have the responsibility of creating another life yeah also uh, excess amount of weight gain which is detrimental to a mother and the baby's health because uh, overweight decreases the amount of nutrition which goes to the baby through placenta so that is another problem so they need to make sure we our as a nutritionist my aim is to make sure the mothers don't gain more than 10 kg for sure Totally. try to totally during the pregnancy 8 wow. to 10 kg but the baby is more than 3 kg up uh, more than 3 kg is fantastic for the uh, fetus when the bo- uh, baby is born so 95% of babies are 3 kg plus if they have crossed the full term when you're writing a diet for a pregnant mom are you keeping that baby in your head you're writing a diet for two people yeah you know? I only think about the baby and mother at that time that make sure that the baby's brain development is great because imagine if the brain is not developed so we need not only um the cholesterol rich food also b12 d3 everything has to be normal and enough amount of protein so everything the omega is also very important at the same time so i have to think about many things then we like we had a woman coming who was uh, 
pregnant with twins at i think third or fourth month and her gynecologist told us that she can't gain a single kg of weight because she was already 92 kilos he said ki i'm really scared about her nutrition which is going to a baby and believe me both the babies were normal when they were born and mother's weight did not cross 94 that means you it's not necessary so we had another case was an, another lady who came at 88 kilos and uh, by the time she delivered 3 plus kgs and her weight was 90 wow so we have cases like these where we have a restriction on mothers cannot gain weight the baby has to be healthy so we do that we also have gestational diabetes which is so difficult for us to handle so with my daughter who is a diabetologist also dr juhi so we both handle uh, cases like that where the mother is diabetic at the same time pregnant so we have to make sure she doesn't gain too much weight because that opens her up to one disease which doctors don't like which is preeclampsia which is uh, 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 which is not liked by the doctors so we make sure that the weight gain is not much and the sugar levels don't go high otherwise the the risk of uh, having bigger size babies also there so complex yeah it's complex but it's it's lot of cha- it's very challenging but we love it what are the most common mistakes that pregnant women do from a diet perspective so they all think that they are eating for two and they all indulge junk so, food yeah so another mistake i've seen uh, mothers doing is eating street food so that is actually very very dangerous so you know another mistake the pregnant women make is having raw food so raw moong okay uncooked moong can actually have like you know people are fond of ha mujhe to moong ka salad khana hai can have a uh, uh, bacteria called listeria which can cause uh, listeriosis which can actually give, give lot of problems to the baby which is still birth and paralysis and many many things i don't want to talk about it and same goes for the street food because you don't know how hygienically they are cooked yeah so they need to be extremely careful about not having uh, they should only have freshly cut salad at home and not have uncooked moong or sprouts and they should not venture out for street food so eat ghar ka khana ghar ka khana <laughs> restaurant ka khana hai khao but garam hot food got it avoid chutneys yeah probably and anything that's raw in a restaurant avoid of course salad yeah hmm during this time they should as i mentioned they should avoid tea coffee because of all the also another thing they should avoid is microwave popcorn because that also is there is a toxicity in that they should also avoid teflon coated air fryers which gives rise to acrylamide which can be uh, not good for the pregnant woman teflon coated air fryers which is most air fryers right <laughs> no we now we get other ones like the ones which are which use metal i think they use ceramic or something i haven't come across but my daughter has called for one i'm going to check okay so many tangents i can go in no into. it's like you know just eat basic home nicely well cooked food and listen to your grandmother <laughs> <laughs> okay uh should we move on to the next phase yes postpartum yes what happens Firstly, to a woman's body in that phase. Secondly, what changes in the diet requirements? Yeah. So, of course, postpartum there are many things happen. There's total hormone changes because whatever hormones were there during pregnancy changes completely. So there, as something you know, postpartum depression which can happen, and of course, um, uh, the lactation time requires. Uh, Four hundred and fifty extra cal, five hundred and fifty extra calories for the mother in the food in terms of food and twenty five grams extra protein during this time. So actually, requirement of protein and calories go much higher during lactation time. Why? During the first six months, because you are feeding the baby, right? The baby is growing only on the mother's milk. Is your body also repairing itself? Yeah, be body body is repairing itself. So you know there there is aches and pains and there is still uh, there is period. Pe- I mean the there is still blood flow. So they have to have. So what we do is we divide the whole six months into the first forty fifty days where they have to they can't afford to have constipation. So we give a jwain which is very very good for them in nicely cooked 
away then uh, like to, ajwain with water no so there is a recipe which we make with uh, gond which is guar gum so we use the not guar gum sorry gond is the gond okay so gond is used because it produces a little bit of a heat and it's extremely good as a galactogog galactogog means the food which increases the milk production so gond is given along with ajwain but maybe little ghee and sugar ghee is good because it's got cholesterol maybe it's brain development and so this is given two two times in a day along with a very rich breakfast lunch dinner the calcium requirement is higher during lactation around 1400 mg so they have to make sure that they're having you know enough liquids uh, in terms of milk at least two to three times during the day and of course some dals because dals are rich in carbs as well as protein so the carbs are also important during this time because otherwise how will baby become active because only so your the the quality of the mother's milk has to be extremely rich for the baby to have proper nutrition because amount of carbs and all you're eating your baby is going to be that active so that is so it's not like low carb diet or anything it has to be a very well formed and good diet for to nourish both mother and baby i've spoken to some of my friends who've had kids um post pregnancy they become a little conscious about their bodies and conscious about the weight loss aspect they want to go back to what their bodies were pre pregnancy but how do you plan this as a nutritionist yeah so what we do is we of course remove the clutter that means we tell them not to have eat drinks chocolates desserts don't think because your calorific requirements are more so you can have a dessert a day so control that make sure you're eating your proteins at every meal in a fiber and uh, uh, but of course uh, exercise so if normal delivery they can start exercising after i think uh, Three weeks or four weeks, and after cesarean, after six weeks. So they need to do that. Make sure the activity is enough. They need to do some stretches because they are sitting for a long time and feeding the baby, so their back might get caught. So that is also important. But exercising, eating healthy, and not having like old times. That there is where I little bit not favor our Marwadi culture, where they literally used to feed one whole fifteen kg. jar of ghee to the pregnant woman during the whole period wow <laughs> 15 kg to the lactation period yeah that was you know ek pipa pipa means i think it's i think it is 15 kg so utna ghee they used to feed for But the sake of, course, of the baby uh, for mother and the baby so of course so that much fat is not required so the fat control and having enough fat in the milk itself which is important for the baby having eggs the yolk fat is very good chicken or fish is extremely healthy or not having like excess fat in the food and not desserts of course same rules as before yes. there's not that much variation yeah it's just that the whole protein structure goes up 25 grams is a lot of protein one extra serving of paneer na nah, paneer one extra serving is 6 grams from one full bowl no that's a lot one one serving we count as 50 grams of paneer which is just 6 grams of protein how much do you get like when you when you buy you know most people mind buy those packaged 200 200 grams i mean i don't know it's like a package <laughs> yeah it'll be 20 to 25 grams 25 grams that, if it's a 200 gram packet you're getting 25 grams of protein from that so one extra slab of that yeah. in a day I'm again. I'm not addressing the non-vegetarian stuff here because it's actually easier to get the protein from non-vegetarian. No. So how we design a diet for a lactating woman at that time would be uh, uh, giving them a glass of milk for breakfast. Then I mean before breakfast when they wake up. Then the, during breakfast they can have eggs along with some carbs. Then mid morning they can have a glass of coconut water, which because the liquid consumption has to go high because they have to make milk then the lunch can be dal roti sabji and little dahi then evening snacks can be again something milk along with so what we are fond of giving to every pregnant woman is uh, i can give you the recipe is uh, dood dalia which is uh, wheat which is broken wheat which is roasted a bit and added uh, water and then cooked then added milk to be added to that and with little sugar or jaggery whatever they like and some nuts so that's a good one or otherwise they can have paneer toasty at that time or milk with anything then evening before dinner they can have a bowl of soup they can have in the soup they can have either spinach soup or the miracle soup as i mentioned any kind of soup at that time is great and then dinner is again with some kind of a protein it can be paneer it can be tofu it can be 
dahi or it can be chicken or fish along with some carbs and vegetables got it wow and the fruits can come as fillers and whenever they want to have seeing a lot of ladies write down all this <laughs> sitting with a notepad and writing all this down yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So galactogogs here are gond, which can be had as the evening snack, or it can be had in between the meals, or it can be had after the lunch as a small laddu. So that is one galactogog. Methi is a galactogog. Uh, there is methi bhaji also, which uh, you make it with the uh, methi seeds, and methi is a galactogog. Then you get satavari tablets, which they can have with the milk, so that increases their milk production. Corn. and even the garlic is a galactogog so to be added to dals or even to the eggs so all these are the rules for postpartum uh, while breastfeeding is on yes post that life will go back to normal mm-hmm. then back to the normal rules that we spoke about yes focus on your exercise focus on your protein intake try eating less processed food yeah and in fact take care of your nutrition because behind the children they forget about their nutrition exercise this is practical input so you become so concerned with the kid that you're not taking care of your own diet yes. what's the common mistake that you stop yes you stop exercising you are like taking care of your kid all the time and uh, of course you don't have time because uh, evenings the, you are with your kid and if you're working mom is double whammy because you have to take care of the kid and the office and your nutrition so they tend to miss a lot so what do you tell them So we tell them that first is you. Of course, your baby till the time baby is fully grown. That's the first responsibility. Then it's you. Then anything else. Okay. Then life goes on. Yeah. Then menopause happens. <laughs> right. That's the next key phase. Yeah. What changes from a dietary perspective in that phase? So menopause is a time where uh, women go through a lot of hormonal changes. So there is a lot of depression setting in and. they tend to gain weight especially around the abdomen upper abdomen and the lower abdomen their digestibility of various food goes low so the enzymes productions are lower and you have start getting uh, uh, hot flashes so so what we do during this phase is increase their calcium intake because uh, osteoporosis is a very major problem that they all face and then secondly is hot flashes so we give them primrose oil once a day then uh, so if earlier and the, also the calcium requirement which i told you is around 1400 mg during lactation and the kids around 11 during pregnant uh, during menopause also is around 1100 to 1200 it's higher so uh, we increase their milk protein protein intake during this time but easily digestible one because they may not be able to digest too much of uh, uh, the chai which is made with full fat milk tea etc so we tell them or coffee with full fat milk so we tell them to have also the caffeine present in caffeine co- uh, coffee and tea will not help them to absorb the calcium from that so it's better that they give up they go to dip teas or a coffee with very little milk and concentrate of using the milk protein in uh, breakfast lunch and dinner is it the dahi paneer or any uh, any other form just plain milk and also yeah <laughs> and also but nobody will drink plain milk i don't it's uh-huh. very difficult to digest so also there um, lassi mm. ha lassi is great i have dahi every day with my lunch okay and my breakfast is 30% paneer or 30 uh, and 40 50% eggs or sometimes moong so that's how the protein balance for my breakfast is so the protein re- requirement also goes up and more than the of course the dietary changes has to be made and their energy uh, ex- expenditure decreases so their carbs have to go lower so if they were having carbs for three times four times in a day breakfast and snacks dinner they should try to omit for one meal so that they don't gain too much weight and the the knee pain and the back pain which is a common thing so the the strength training has to start i should be started much earlier but if they haven't started this should start by the age of 40 for sure to avoid osteoporosis to avoid muscle wastage mus- losing muscle because that's the way you age right so you have to hold on to your muscles if you are uh, doing your exercises regularly you will not get frozen shoulder otherwise that's what you're looking for so frozen shoulder plantar fasciitis all these happens because you're not regularly exercising so that can be taken <laughs> care of and of course iron deficiency and i think keeping a very healthy outlook and uh, um uh, making sure exercising becomes a very very important part during this time at this phase it's 
not so much about the dietary changes mm-hmm. if your diet has been healthy it's more about increasing exercise yeah it's it's the most important thing and also i have seen that women during menopause also had disturbed sleep so taking magnesium glycinate during this time is extremely helpful wow what are the supplements primrose if they're having hot flashes and checking their d3 regularly iron regularly b12 multivitamin ubiquinol or coenzyme q10 we give it to everyone because of the heart health and also if someone is taking thyroid medication because they have thyroid so the coenzyme q2 level goes down in their heart so though we can increase it by giving a supplement and an omega which is very very important yeah these are enough and vitamin c if they want to otherwise it's fine Also, another thing I find that many women after menopause have a lot of pigmentation around their face. Yeah, so they can take glutathione with vitamin C to get rid of the pigmentation. Okay. Now, are you ready for the next question? Yes. How do guys my age convince our moms to do all this? <laughs> <laughs> He won't believe so many of Juhi's friends uh, have brought their mothers for their diet because they really want to take care of their mothers, yeah. right? So they all come and the uh, the sons really force them that you have to take care of nutrition. My children after me. I mean, I they don't have to be after me, but yeah, they take care of me. Why? <laughs> Write a diet that? for yourself. <laughs> Yeah. yeah you need to take care of your parents so that you know they're um they have a good quality life at the age of 70 80 90 they're not dependent on you they are walking without a stick my aim is only that every person who comes to me i should take them in such a way or make their foundation so strong that they are able to walk in 90s even beyond 90s without a stick without a help what's it like for women who are going through menopause like what is their life like how does it feel yeah so depression they feel weight gain is okay because i've menopause yeah and uh sleep disturbance and so it is um it is you know it to each its own because i think it's what is important is to address this issue with like full force and not make yourself the victim okay i am menopause so i have this problem that's what i did so i there was a phase in my life where i wanted to feel old so i thought i'll wear lighter color clothes and you know just be a little more i said no i'm going to challenge myself and challenge my age and still learn dancing and still wow. do jogging and still do everything which i was doing so it's up to you how young you feel so there is, we also have a machine which tells you your metabolic age so so we in we tell people ki your aim should be to bring your metabolic age lower and lower and lower god you see it happening yeah yeah okay uh all the time my metabolic age <laughs> nahi i'm saying do you see women in their 50s 60s 70s starting to take care of the nutrition and exercise aspects yeah. of their life they, again they are the women at my age are extremely uh, what you call aware of this and they all want to take care in fact because they the kids are all married and staying in some other houses they have more time so they all want to take care. so many women between the age of 45 and 70 are coming to us okay. and they are all doing extremely well so as a nutritionist your biggest advice during this phase is fix the exercise aspect of things yes exercise and diet is also very very important i mean we've spoken so much about diet till this point that yeah. i don't know what more we can add other than you spoke yeah. about so supplements so another problem during this time is women forget to go to the gynec regularly which i advise them because they have to do pap smear they have to do if the doctors advises mammography because there's a huge rise in cancer cases after COVID. we don't know whether it's related to we don't know whether it's just aging we don't know what but there's a huge rise in uh, breast cancer cases i have seen in last one year two years so they have to be very aware of their body they cannot decrease their nutrition they make sure they have enough protein don't follow fads don't do fat diets don't give up uh, milk for any reason so you need to be soundly advised for your nutrition during this time because you don't want unwanted unnecessary problems in your life later on which can make you feel very very depressed okay. so you don't want like breaking bones you don't want cancer you don't want dementia dementia so also dementia is also related to very high levels of sugar so they need to make sure that they are eating so well that they 
don't have any genetic disease which they are predisposed to because they're taking care of their sleep, their exercise, their diet, their vital vitamins and their nutrition and their mind mental health. Okay. Suman ma'am, that's it. That's the episode for today. We're done with the timeline. Okay. <laughs> I think this is pretty much what at least I think of as a 30 year old man about what a woman's reality is yeah. so I'm sorry ladies if I've missed out on anything have I missed out on no, anything no no I think you covered very well okay uh, just wanted to make this a very cut to cut episode but I'm glad always great learning from you and uh, thank you for sharing all that wisdom again that's all I have to say. Oh, thank you so much. And I love talking to you always. I don't know how you have become such a fantastic YouTuber. I just, I really enjoy people. And I've realized after, after a point in this whole YouTubing journey, you realize that, okay, now there's no personal career goals left. So might as well make your whole career about like helping people. Yeah. Because there is karma attached to work. I'm, I'm learning a lot and I'm getting inspired. <laughs> Start your YouTube channel. Okay. Done. I, I actually think that more women's content is needed generally. And I see this based on talking to my sister, talking to my mom, talking to my girlfriend. There's a lot of questions which guys can't answer. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. I had a lot of fun. And Anytime. please return to TRS very soon. Of course, of course. Thank Whenever you. Whenever you call me. Done. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. That was the episode for today, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys are also listening in till this point, I know this one was helpful. We will be doing this episode in Hindi as well. But for now, in the comment section, please give us feedback on this episode and tell us what else you'd like for us to cover on TRS when it comes to fitness and health. We will be back very soon. If you want some more fitness and health episodes, we'll link our fitness podcast playlist down below. We'll also link some of our Hindi episodes. Please check those out as well. And until next time, guys from Ranveer and the team, we'll see you very, very soon.